All right, let's talk about something that could seriously shake up the mobile tech world. Not just an incremental update, not another camera bump or processor tweak. This is something that might actually change the game. If you've been paying attention to smartphones lately, it's easy to feel like things have gone a bit stale. Every year, it's the same two giants, Apple and Google, trading blows, making small improvements, slightly better cameras, slightly faster chips, a new color. But fundamentally, the experience hasn't changed all that much. The excitement is wearing thin. And then, almost out of nowhere, Huawei dropped something completely unexpected. Now, let's address the obvious up front. Yes, Huawei's name is charged. There are politics involved, sanctions, global tension. We'll talk about that. But for a moment, try setting all of that aside. Strip away the headlines and focus purely on the technology. Because what Huawei just released is not just a new product. It's a bold bet on the future. It's called Harmony OS Next, and it's unlike anything Huawei or anyone else really has released before. This isn't just another version of Android with a new interface. It's not a reskinned version of the Android open source project. It's not a clone or a fork. Harmony OS Next is a completely original operating system built from scratch, from the kernel up. No Android DNA, no Linux foundation, no ties to Google. Huawei has essentially tossed out the entire legacy system that most of the world's phones are built on. Instead, they've developed their own microkernel-based system, and that matters. Microkernels by design are leaner and more secure than monolithic ones. They isolate core services like networking, file access, and Bluetooth in a way that makes it harder for malware to propagate or for one compromised part of the system to affect the rest. In theory, this results in better memory management, fewer vulnerabilities, and potentially far better performance. Of course, we've heard this kind of promise before, the so-called Android killer. But almost every time a company tries to make a new mobile OS, they fall into the same trap. They lean on Android's code base, wrap it in a new skin, talk about freedom and innovation, and then fade into irrelevance. Because underneath all the marketing, it's still Android, still Google's ecosystem, still the same rules. Huawei is the first major player that's actually walked away entirely. And let's be clear, that is not a small thing. Building a brand new operating system isn't just hard, it's borderline insane. It's like trying to invent a new internet protocol. You're not just changing code, you're challenging a global system that's been built over decades. You're upending user habits, developer norms, entire... So why is Huawei doing this? Why now? To understand that, you have to go back a few years. Huawei wasn't always a company under pressure. In fact, for a time, they were on top. They were the number one smartphone maker in the world, ahead of both Apple and Samsung. Then came 2019. The U.S. imposed severe sanctions, cutting Huawei off from U.S. technology. No access to Google mobile services, no Play Store, no Gmail, no Google Maps. Their access to critical semiconductor tech was also restricted. It was a direct hit to their business. A lot of people assumed that was the end, that Huawei would fade into irrelevance, unable to compete without access to the tools and supply chains that powered their success. But instead of folding, Huawei made a hard pivot. They went all in on vertical integration. They started designing their own chips, building their own app store, and most importantly, developing their own operating system. And it wasn't a fast or easy process. It took years of investment and internal development. But what we're seeing now is the result of that long-term strategy. Harmony OS Next is their moonshot. It officially launched in October 2024. And unlike previous versions of Harmony OS, which were still tethered to some Android components, this one is entirely independent. And it's not just about being different. It's about being better. The microkernel system allows Harmony OS Next to isolate each subsystem, making it far more secure. Bluetooth, network services, file systems, they're all siloed. That means if one part is compromised, it doesn't bring down the entire system. That's a big deal for security and reliability. And performance? Early users are reporting faster boot times, quicker app switching, and fewer background processes eating up RAM. Some users are even seeing up to an extra hour of screen time compared to similarly specced Android phones. That's not theoretical. That's based on real-world usage. But performance is just one part of the equation. An operating system lives or dies by its ecosystem. And here's the challenge. Harmony OS Next doesn't support Android apps, not even sideloaded. 
So the question becomes, how do you convince users to switch when they lose access to millions of familiar apps? Huawei's answer is to start fresh. They're betting everything on native development. They've introduced a new programming language called RTS, purpose-built for Harmony OS Next. And as of launch, the new OS already supports over 15,000 native apps. That might seem small next to the millions on Google Play. But Huawei isn't targeting the global market all at once. They're starting with China, and they've already locked in the big names. Meituan, Alipay, JDCom, NetEase, these are massive platforms with hundreds of millions of users. Huawei has also created an entire ecosystem of developer support, coding boot camps, financial incentives, app store prioritization. They're doing everything they can to attract, but one app matters more than any other, WeChat. If you're unfamiliar, think of WeChat as the backbone of digital life in China. It's not just for messaging, it's payments, shopping, ride-hailing, government IDs, even health records. For Harmony OS to succeed, WeChat has to work flawlessly. An early version of WeChat for Harmony OS next launched in November 2024. It's functional, it handles chat, social feeds, the basics, but it's still missing major features like payments, video channels, and built-in translation. Some analysts see it as a solid foundation, others think it's too limited. Either way, Huawei understands how critical WeChat is, and they're pouring resources into making it complete. And the results? In China, at least, they are already seeing a shift. Huawei's phone sales jumped 90% in October 2024. Apple's market share slipped. Android vendors lost ground. Harmony OS is now the default OS on millions of new devices. In some government departments, iPhones are being banned from official use. Harmony OS is quickly becoming a kind of national standard. And it's not just phones anymore. Huawei is rolling Harmony OS into tablets, TVs, smartwatches, even cars. In April 2025, Toyota released an electric vehicle, the BZ7, running Harmony OS. That's a major signal that this isn't just about mobile, it's about controlling the user experience across all connected devices. But let's not pretend this is an easy road outside of China. In the US, in Europe, most people are deeply tied to Google and Apple. Your emails, your calendars, your cloud backups, your favorite apps. That's a tough thing to walk away from especially when alternatives don't offer the same level of trust, familiarity, or integration. And the trust gap is real. Huawei's name still raises red flags in the West. Concerns about surveillance, security, ties to the Chinese government, whether fair or not, make it difficult for the company to expand in those regions. That's a major roadblock. But here's the wild card. Huawei may not need the U.S. or Europe, at least not yet. Their focus is on emerging markets. Asia, Africa, Latin America, places where the Apple-Google duopoly isn't as entrenched. In those markets, people are looking for alternatives that are more affordable, more open, and more localized. If Harmony OS can gain traction in just a few of those regions, it could lay the foundation for a truly global third e That would be historic. For over a decade, mobile users have had just two real options, Android or iOS. Everyone else who tried to enter the game, Microsoft, Amazon, BlackBerry, failed. Not because their tech was bad, but because they couldn't crack the ecosystem lock-in. Habits were too strong, developer interest too thin, user expectations too rigid. But Huawei has a few things those other challengers didn't. Scale. Nearly a billion active devices, a home market of more than a billion users, direct government support, deep control over both hardware and software supply chains. That gives them leverage no one else had. So the real question now is, what do users want? Would you switch to a phone that doesn't run Google or Apple software? Would you be willing to trade your favorite apps for better speed, battery life, and privacy? Because if enough people say yes, even in just a few key markets, this could be the biggest shift in mobile technology since the iPhone. I want to know what you think. Are you rooting for Harmony OS? Do you think it has a real shot? Or are you skeptical that anyone can ever break Apple and Google's hold? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you want to go deeper into this, whether it's Huawei's AI push, the broader tech rivalry between the US and China, or how Apple might respond to this new threat, let me know. I'd be happy to dig in. Until then, stay curious, stay skeptical, and never stop questioning the